Um, now, with what seems like such a widespread kind of distrust of news now, what um, keeps you motivated and also really, you know, innovative in your coverage? I really like the ability, and I've, I've tried to choose beats about Trump. Obviously, Trump's a really important story. It was last year, he is this year. Um, I try to choose beats about him that are that are about facts, that are about not about um, a lot of writing about Trump last year and this year. There's sort of subtext to it, which is like, aren't you shocked by this? Aren't you outraged by this? And last year it was like, voters, aren't you outraged by this? Now it's Paul Ryan, aren't you outraged by this? You know, are you going to turn on Trump? And that kind of coverage is very frustrating because you're always trying to you're writing about sort of slippery things, norms. You know, how much falsehood is, is the president allowed to engage in? How much falsehood from Trump matters? Mm -hmm. Into his words, you know, writing about Trump's words and whether Trump's words, you know, his, his words are often a very poor predictor of the truth or what he will, himself will do. So it, those are very frustrating beats because you're often trying to write about something that's so slippery. I like writing about facts, you know, in, in, in the context of the charitable giving, you know, did he give money or not? You know, if there's money there, you know, there's a, there's a way to ascertain, the, you know, whether money was given or not. Um, now writing about his businesses, you know, the businesses making money and losing money, you know, any customers are losing customers. Writing about things, so writing about Trump's words and his rhetoric, that has to be done. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it, it has to be done, but I don't want to do it. Uh, it's important to understand two things about politics. The intentions of politics, right, the intentions of policies, and the actual implementation of results. And I think it wasn't until I covered Congress and government waste that I really understood why people were skeptical of the government, why people were skeptical of government expansion. Why? Because they weren't looking at what the government wants to do or what in, a, in, a, in the best world would, what, you know, people intend for the government to do, but rather what actually comes out of government actions. I think that's something that's important for student journalists to understand you go off to cover campus, state, or national politics to think about and to seek out experts and opinions about the real world results of policies rather than the sort of uh, theoretical intentions of policies. Okay. So you have to think about ways of like giving people a thread to follow, mm -hmm. making sure that they understand that whatever you're writing about today is linked to a broader story that's unfolding, mm -hmm. and also to think about creating content that's meant for people who have lost the thread or never had it, right? People who are like, oh, I'm interested in that topic, you know, how do I catch up to it? Mm -hmm. And before, the only way we had to do that was to put B matter in stories. You know, so like paragraphs 8 through 12, your story about whatever breaking news would be the background and context. But you know, how do we create? I've been trying to think about how do we create content that's meant for somebody who like has lost the thread or never had it and now goes, oh, that's interesting, you know, I wanna I wanna be up to speed on that. Mm -hmm. So that's for me it's been like, you know, using social media to like the notebook I had last year. If you're gonna use like a, a social media uh, a notebook or something else on social media, giving people sort of a way on social media to see not just that the stories are linked because they're attached to a similar image, but that the stories change, right? So it's not about that a list of something on social media. You know, it only works if the list changes, right? If you can watch the evolution of the story in one image. And then to write things like Q&As or other things that are, are constantly updated so that if you're like, hey, what's going on with Mar-a-Lago? And Charity's quoting Mar-a-Lago. You're confident that if I go to the Washington Post website right now, whatever the current version of that story is, is the most up-to-date story. So I can then read one thing and then I'm off to the races. I can follow what happens after. 